New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, give it up for Rock Him Out Loud. The yes, God yes, MC, yes, one of the greatest ever do it. Peace and shit like culture you. changed the game. Thank you, my I mean, G. Thank you. I mean, it's brother. just, I could keep throwing. Superlatives? Yeah, I could keep going, but it, it, you know, it's a blessing, you're here, man. man. I, I need to hear May Day, man. So what the blessing. technique is out, the book, yes, by sir. the way. Yes, sir. So I was just saying to you before we started this conversation that, you know, I'm appreciative that you decided to put out a book and be a part Thank of this. You, man. Because we don't get to hear from one of the greats. And many, and there's other greats too. Like I don't think yes. we hear from KRS One enough. Mm. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear from you more. I don't. You know, I'd love to hear from Chuck in certain contexts because yeah, people yeah. romanticize and remix how hip hop became what it is today, which yes, is sir. the largest consumed music culture on planet Earth. Yes, and so, you know, the consumer gets upset. Yo, where's the real ones and this and that? And I'm like, but the leaders sometimes, you know, you're you're seen as leadership, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when we don't hear how things were taken care of, how things were put together, the care that went into it, the perspective and the purpose. A lot yeah. of times things make left turns and, and I'm, pr I'm appreciative so. of you. I appreciate that, man. You know what I mean? Like this this genre, man, sometimes makes, uh, you know, some of the artists like myself feel, you know, you know, somewhat not wanted, man. So it's good to know that, you know, you know, there's, there's a relevant and, you know, it's a welcome match, so well, I appreciate it. We talked about this um, when you did Juan Epstein a couple years ago with me and Saifa. Yeah, no We problem. talked a lot about the level of appreciation for you. Yes, sir. Some people, I feel like, really haven't gotten their flowers. And you mentioned not always feeling wanted. Do you feel you've gotten, like, you, in your specific case, do you feel you've gotten your flowers and people have shown you the love? Um, yeah, I got to say, yeah, because, you know what I mean, I always get, I get mad love, like like in a room right now. You know what I mean? It's It's always love, man. It's a blessing. But um, you know, sometimes you know there's certain accolades that that we push for. You know what I mean? We feel sometimes you know we don't get the the full recognition for certain things. But that's how it is, man. What would that be? Would it, would, the, would that look like Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Well, 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 nah, for for me, it's, it's personal. It's like MC stealing, you know, styles and and ideas and and you know, for people to not understand where it came from or not really know where it came from. So you know, it's, it's more of a personal skill thing with me man but like that's why i said like the love and all that man i can't you know i can't say i don't get that and you've um you've gotten the personal um interactions and accolades from the others that are seen as the greats the the j's the yes, m's sir. the yes, people sir. like that no doubt you always no feel doubt. like you've gotten that yeah no doubt no doubt um good that's important because i feel like you're if your name's not if if you didn't feel that way then I don't know who would, because you know what I'm saying. I feel that yeah, you yeah. are of, of your generation, probably the main name that people are always careful to be like. Well, let's never forget right. Rock him a lot. I mean, we that's even when ASAP Rocky, like he was named after you. Yeah, well, 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 <laughs> and, yeah and, and, and that's humbling. That's humbling. And what's crazy about that is I remember, man, a long time ago, driving through Harlem, a lady walks across the street. I'm at the light. She walks across the street. She got, you know carriage and everything. Yo, could you sign this for me? And I, I never say no. What's his name? Rakim. I'm like, world up? She like, Rakim, world. So I signed a joint. And I remember that day, because that's the first time, you know, me hearing somebody name their son after me, you know what I mean? So, you know, like I said, humbling experience. And then for years later, for him to pop up, because, you know, I seen him rising. I'm like, oh, that's dope, Rakim. Yeah, well. But then when I spoke to him, and he brought the story up, man. So, you know, it all came back to me, man. So, you know, it, it was crazy, wow. man. That's Big up to ASAP, too, Yo, man. Shout out to Angie Martinez, too. Oh, yep. man. You know, uh, when she was here and, and Peace, continues man. to keep that story alive yes. um, for bringing you guys together like, dope. and yeah. reintroducing y'all to yeah. And Rocky's sister, dope. Erica. Right, and yeah. Erica. Erica B. Erica no doubt. B. <laughs> She's <laughs> the most hip hop family of no all doubt. time. That's great. So That's great. So, I would love to go back to something we were just talking about here on. The show, which uh, happened at Sirius XM with, yeah. with Lord Sear. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> And so, and, and I want to clarify why you was here. I, f I believe that Lord Sear made you think. He told the story wrong. Yeah, I heard. I heard I, I heard what really happened, man. And um, and which resulted in you being like, look, I love Search, but if you ever speak, like, you want to yeah, rap for yeah. me, I'll punch him in the face. Yeah, and, and see, that's what I mean, man. Like, you know, at this point, you know, artists like myself, we just want... 
you know, that 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 shirt, like, yo, I did that, man. You know what I mean? Don't don't get it twisted. I did that. Nobody wrote for me. You know, I ain't have never have a ghostwriter. So for somebody at this time, years later, to come up and say, yo, I was writing rhymes or I was going to write a rhyme, and I never even, you know, had any uh, indication of that, man. Like, come on, search, man. Did you did you and search ever talk afterwards or no? Have after after the law here? Yeah. Nah, we you haven't. still haven't talked. We haven't. No. Now, is it possible, is it possible that at that time, there was a situation in which I'm I'm literally we were just speculating on what could the story have been. See, I think be. Leo like reached Leo, out to search. Yeah, he was, could. So right, he man, could Leo have. Rock Kim's music. He could can have. help him finish up. Right, yeah, is it possible have. Leo could have done that? It, yeah, and, and and the the way I heard it, I heard that um, search reached out to Eric B. And was like, yo, I'm supposed to write a song, or whatever. And Eric B was like, you know, Fuck out of here. hung up the phone and shit. But um, so that all sounds possible. Yeah, but yeah, it's just the way it came out. Cause I ain't hear, nice. I ain't hear about uh, somebody said Sir said that like maybe months ago, and I never heard that. So for him to bring it up at that point, you know, what I mean, it it was like, like come on, man, you know, all this time, you know, and now Sir is talking that. But um, I heard Sir's uh, interview, and I heard the way he explained it, and then I heard his man's. Oh, Pete right. Nice? Pete, Pete nice. nice, you know what I mean? So I was like, wow, this shit's a mess, man. Yeah, so, you, know know, I mean? you were like, ah, I was like yeah, yeah, <laughs> let, 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 let them go ahead with that. Man. <laughs> now, once and for all, I've asked you about this a long, long time ago, but just to be clear, because I know it still comes up. You did not write Summertime. No, nah, no, nah, I didn't. Jazzy Jeff Fresh Prince was not written, Summertime was not written by Ryan. Nah, now, nah, when you heard it, here it is. Oh, man, groove. listen, listen. It felt I'm, like your flow. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the, the, real, the real shit. I'm, I'm riding through New York. Flicking through the radio stations, we had we had uh, 107, mm-hmm. um, 98, 98, yeah, you know what I mean, FM. Kiss FM, flashing back and forth. So I flashed through, I hear rhyme, I'm like, oh shit, and, and I and I changed the channel. I was like, oh shit, that was me. Flip that shit back, turn that shit up, and yo, like like the funniest feeling, man. You 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 get a feeling like yo, somebody just robbed you. You know, point blank in front of everybody. Like I was sitting there, like, is this shit a is this shit a joke, man? Like, so you know, time went on, and you know, I started listening, and then you know, it hit me like, yo, Ra, you 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 popping right now? You know what I mean, your style, that what was you homage. doing? That was him. World is born. You know what I mean? And you know, in the beginning, like like I said, any artist, man, when you when when you going through, you know, your your artistry and you're doing your thing, you hear somebody touching on your style or anything, you going like, yo. But um, Did you, you know, ever talk a, to a, after it settled in and, and, and people was coming up to me, you know, I realized, you know, like yeah, you know, they, like they catching on to the style. So. Did you ever talk to Will Smith? Do you? Uh, nah, like, nah. Y'all never nah, interacted after that. Wrote up, never, never interacted. Because it is for people who have, don't know what we're talking about. Maybe you're young and you don't know either record, but summertime, the whole flow of it, yeah. And that's really a testament, though, regardless of how it happened to how impactful your style was. Because right now, it would be hard. It's so obvious that it's your style. Yeah. And these yeah. days, people don't have a style Here that's so... Right, 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 right. slightly, slightly transformed. He broke yeah. contact. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, you know, but that's yeah, all you know, but yeah, you know, you, you, you know, you first, first you go through that feeling of you've been robbed, and then right after that, it's like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to register. Wait, what year is summertime? Something. Uh, summertime was 91. 91? So, I think 91. And so what year was Illmatic? 94, April 94. 94, mm-hmm. because at that time, once again, here comes Nas, and everybody yeah. starts yeah. going back to Rakim, right? Yeah. That he, yeah. Yeah. You know, now when you heard Nas for the first time, what was your, what, how did you feel? I felt of the same, same thing, like, it was more people come to me first. Me and Nas knew each other from the studio. He used to always come to Power Play when I was doing my album. But I never really heard his stuff yet. Um, a brother from Queens, Hot Day, came to me one day. He was like, yo, Nas, man, you got a, got a joint coming out. Yo, bro, he sounded, you know, he sounded like you a lot, man. Like, you know, so, you know, I heard it more on the street before I heard the song. So when I when, when, I, when I first heard the song, I didn't really, I didn't really hear no He wasn't doing the tone of voice. You know what he I was mean? doing the, the right, vivid so, imagery part of it. Exactly, the, you know yeah. what I mean? So when I first heard it, I was like, nah, that's, you know, he's he doing his thing. I can I can understand uh, the lane, you know what I mean? But I didn't really feel like he was, you know. Trying to co op Right. You know was what there I mean? any, of, of the MCs that came after you, was there anyone that you really love and just chose to listen to on your own and is like, this is just an artist that I really enjoy? I mean, I'm 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 a fan. I'm a fan of hip hop. That's how I kind of, you know, stay in touch with it. You know, and, and Nas is one of them cats, and um, you know, go on. Jay Z, you know, I love Fifty. 
Um, you know, I listen to the to the greats, pun. You know what I mean? The, the Buster Rhymes, the the Wu Tang. Like, you know, I, I I just you know like staying a fan of it because it keeps me uh in touch with what's going on. And and you know, I was a fan before I started. You know, before I, was I be, a fiend, before I became you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So yeah, so I gotta, I gotta stay. You know, I gotta stay in love with the music in order to keep that so passion. So who, who was this? Is this is this is often this is this is not talked about enough, but it started. Who was the first in your eyes? The first great MC. I'm talking about before you. Oh, that's a good question. The generation that we didn't even really listen to like that. You know, the the Kazes. That, there you go. Is like Melly, Melly Mel, Kaz, and Mo D was like. Mo D. Yeah, you know they wow. was. They Mo was D like, doesn't end up in the conversation enough for how important he they was. Don't, too. Yeah, they, they, you know, they, they need to check their history, man. Mo D was a beast. He was now, a beast. Now, how did you? Now that you say Mo D, was that? Did he influence some of your voice usage and? Because you, he had a very sinister approach. Yeah, to yeah. how he used his voice. I think I think Mo was was definitely like like one of my teachers. Like I kind of. I kind of um, gravitated to him, Mel, and and Cash. You know what I mean? But you know them 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 three cats and and Mo's delivery to me was just you know monstrous. Like you know what I mean? And 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 if you're gonna you know follow anybody, you know at that time it was Mo. How old were you when you first decided to start writing? <sighs> Where my brother? <laughs> um, I think I was like um, just maybe eight. Eight nine years old, and so, and um, your aunt was the musician or Ruth Brown, um, my aunt, yeah man, um, blues, yeah, rhythm and blues singer, jazz, um, she was a real big influence uh, on my life. What, what was dope about that is she used to babysit me, so at a young age I used to go to a crib and just you know just watch her, and in the back of my mind I, every now and then I used to just stop and stare at her like you know she's famous man she you know singing on records on TV, and I just look at her, she'd be in the crib doing her thing, eating Slim Jims, watching TV, chilling. I remember sitting there, she had a show that night in Manhattan, and I remember sitting there watching her, she still did a regular routine, eat a little snacks, watch TV. But on the show night, she'd get up, she'd throw some clothes on her, she had this little uh, fashion uh, room, she'd throw her clothes up on the joint, go sit down and watch some TV, get up, grab some glue, Watch a little more TV, come back with the sprinkles. Watch a little TV. Two, three hours later, she got a whole outfit, you know what mm. I mean? Dress, shoes, pocketbook, hat, and glitted it out. And, you know, she basically made that herself oh, in the crib. Oh, wow. But, you know, she'd take a regular, you know, outfit and, you know, glitter it up, man. And, you know, before you know, she looked like she ready for the Cotton Club, man. But just watching how she went through things and, and her M.O. and how down to earth she was and... You know, I kind of gravitated towards that, man, and made sure, like, my M.O. was the same, you know, same way, just, you know. Do the showmanship aspect. Of yes, sir, just, you know what I mean, the way you approach things and, you know, and, and just, you know, how, how laid back and how cool she was about it. Like, you would never think she was getting ready for a show that day. You know so, I mean? when, when, um, when you guys first hit the scene, you had the jackets on, you went and got the Dapper Dan kit. Well. We talked to Dap kid. about y'all pulling up to get the kid. Yeah, I mean, and I I want to say uh, before y'all, who else had a Dap? Run DMC was Run DMC. Nah, nah, nah. y'all was I the first we with the cover stand ones. kit. The, yeah, it's paid in full, bro. Yeah, paid in full was the first the time yeah. we saw that, right? It's the most and it's the biggest one too. And and what prompted you? Because you know Dap got his book now. Yeah, he got his Gucci. Yeah. You know, Crazy. appointment only well, shit up Big up Dap and Dan too. That's that's my guy, man. What what what? How did y'all? Well, y'all, we want this look. I went to a party in Four Green, Four Green Projects, and I walk up in the party, man, and it's like 30 cats on with Gucci, Fendi, Louie, just all different suits. I said to my man, like, yo, G, where, where y'all get these shits from, man? Dapper Dan. I'm like, yo, you know, don't worry, I'm taking you in the morning. So yeah, it, 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 it was a street scene, man. You know, the, the, the cats that was getting it, you know what I mean, could yeah. afford it, yeah. but um. I just remember walking up in there, man. Like I said, at least 30, 40 cats just suited out hats. Some had it on they, they footwear, whatever. I'm like, yo, my G. You know, I don't even want to say their name and shit, but yeah, yeah just, just you know, it was a street look at the time. And um, 
we was lucky to kind of get up on it at that time when we did because it kind of, you know, it 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 definitely uh, elevated the brand. Eric B and Rakim brand made it, you know, gave us a nice distinctive look, you know what I mean? But you know, we, we ran into that right on time. Has that the, and everything came right into play. Has this most recent era of streaming been good for you? Personally, I have to imagine there was a time in the early 2000s, yeah. uh, mid-2000s, when record sales were going away. Yeah. But streaming wasn't there yet, where I'm guessing things could have slowed up a bit. Has the yeah. streaming thing been good that people can always consume your music now? Yeah, it's, it's you know, for me, it's, it's lucrative. But for the for the consumer, man, it's, it's informal. And it gives, you know, them a chance to always, you know, be able to, you know, get out our music, man. So... You know the 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 evolution of it, man. You know we have to adapt to what's going on and and also take advantage of it. You know what I mean? Do you know what record gets streamed the most? Do you know what your biggest record is on nah, stream? Nah, nah, I don't even I don't even keep up with what would you Instagram guess? Instagram and Mr. Apple and Music. All that man. <sighs> I can go into the Rakim artist page right uh, now. And I can <laughs> tell you, I'm curious. The people's favorites inside the great Apple Music. Take a guess. Oh, what's your guess? Sweat the technique. You're going to wow. Yeah. Well, there's a new book, so hopefully that leads y'all to the yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. So when you get the book Sweat the Technique, there's also a song. Don't yes, Sweat the Technique. Now, um, y yeah, I guess uh, part of me wants to say Eric B is president or paid in full, but top songs. I'm wow. going paid in full. I'm going paid in full. Don't sweat the Technique. I ain't no joke. I think it's number one. I mean, oh, you beat Don't Sweat the Technique is of, of the, what is seen as the classics. Okay. Don't Sweat the Technique. But you'd be surprised what people are streaming with you on it. Mm. They're, they're streaming When I Be On The Mic. Wow. Truth Hurts. They're streaming the joint you featured on with Linkin Park. I didn't oh, know that happened. Nice, guilty. The Watcher 2 wow. on Hove's album. Guess Who's Back. Wow. That well, Guess Who's Back you do hear a lot, actually. That, yeah. that gets used, yeah. I hear that I hear that instrumental playing on sports sometimes. Like guess yeah, who's back yeah, pops yeah, up. Yeah, I catch that a lot. That and sweat the technique too. Yeah. Hold on. Uh the eighteenth letter, the saga begins. Well the saga begins is just disgusting how hard that record is. Pete, Pete Rock. Rock. Yes, sir. Shout out to Pete Rock. Pete I mean Rock's the same. That's my man. What was um what was the most uh um challenging time in your career? Because there was that long period where stuff didn't come out where we yeah, were all I, waiting for the Dre album. Yeah, and, I I think um that right there, man. Um, trying to stay relevant, trying to, you know, and then and then to to, to go to Cali and, and start a project. Like I, I always kind of wrote in order. Um, I always wrote what I live. Like I would go through different stages of my life, and to me, that was an album. So when I went to Cali and started working, I did a lot of work, and when I realized it wasn't gonna come out. Then I had to realize where I was gonna start from. Was I gonna, you know, remix what I did out there, or just you know forget it and start from scratch? And and to me, that's like the hardest thing. Cause I hate I hate recycling, but I hate leaving chapters out. You know, I call them chapters. You know, when like I said, when I'm living, what I record on the paper is is what I'm going through. And at the same time, is I feel it's the next step. From the last album, right. So to, to miss the Dre era would be to yeah. skip a chapter that yes, happened. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, so you ended up starting from scratch for the 18th letter. You okay. just said screw it and yeah, started over again. Up. Well, and, how uh, much material do you have with Dre that never came out? Well, um, I think Dre may have did maybe maybe a beat, but his his crew maybe I had a, like 10, 12 um, tracks from. Uh, so in the studio, different artists that he had in the crew, different uh, got it. Producers. So well, even what, if he wasn't hands on to all of it, what well, were there? What was the toughest part at that stage of your career when you went into that relationship with Dre and his label? Yeah. What What was hard I, for you as Rock Him? I think trying to um, trying to adapt to what Dre wanted to do, but at the same time um, keep my grounds. As far as you know who I am, and, and and you know I had to let Dre know, you know you know who I am. It was a little little confusing. We couldn't get on the same page. Um, you know Dre got a formula. It always works for him, and you know it's gangster rap. You know right. what I mean? And he feels, you know, but I had to let him know, like, come on, Dre, I've been there, did that. I don't think you know people want to hear, you know, Rago, you know, 
take it back to the streets, so you know what I mean? But um just trying to keep my ID. But you know, you know, you you, you go out to California, you trying to, you know, um, you know, make moves in your career and, and so, you know, I was trying to fit in and, and not be uh, difficult to work with or, you know, a diva or whatever, man. Cause you know, I do, I do have my certain, you know, style of music that I like to write to. Um, I got my way, you know what I mean? That I like to get down, but you know, you, you out there, you know, you try to fit in and, and, and just let, you know, people know you're ready to work. You know what I mean? It's very you, interesting. The, um, you and Eric B now, Things smooth is good, as brothers. Yeah, yeah, Y'all back, cool. back yeah, in order. Yeah. What was the what caused the split back in the in the early nineties? Um, and is and how much of all of this is in the book? Most of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most of, most of what we're speaking on right now is in the book. There's a lot of the Dre stuff too. Yeah, I kind of broke down the Dre scenario. Um, definitely the Eric B scenario. Um, back in the day, uh, we had three more albums on our contract, and um. Eric B came to me one day. It was a good idea, though. He came to me. He was like, yo, Rob, we got three more joints. He said, you do a joint. I do a joint. Then we do the last joint together. We done with the contract. They got to re-sign us. He said, but you know, when you do the joint, you keep the paper. I do the joint. I keep the paper. We get back together, finish up, get more paper. Sound good. So I said, all right. He wanted to go first. So I had to sign a contract to release myself from the contract so he can make the album by himself. I did that. Um, he did his album and it was my turn to do mine. I couldn't find him. So, you know, it, it, it got a little crazy and, you know. Cause you needed his signature? Yeah. To get your, to, to get my project started. And then what happened after a while, they, you know, they stopped my money and everything, the label, you know, because I wasn't on the contract. Mm. They stopped my paper and everything. So months was going by, you know, six months. So I started, you know, going to knock on his door. You know, it got a little crazy. Um, <coughs> finally, I got in. Let's just put it like that. I got into the apartment, and uh, one of his uh, friends was there. And um, finally, he got Eric B on the phone. And Eric B told me he didn't want to sign a contract because it was going to take him off the contract, which it was supposed to. And then, you know, he was saying, then, you, then you're not going to pick me back up when it's time to do the third album. So, you know, we had beef. You know, I was bitter for a real long time about that. Um, well, what, it, what you're saying sounds like he didn't keep the word that y'all agreed to. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? And out of fear of you Not me maybe... signing him after I right. finished mine. You know what I mean? And, you know, which was crazy. Was there ever a time where you didn't keep your word, where he would think that you wouldn't have kept your word? Never that. Never that. I'm, I'm, I'm a loyal cat. He know that. And, and, you know, because of that, I deal with principle. You know what I mean? And. It could be the littlest, you know what I mean, my new thing, man, but if the principle of it is bigger than the subject, then I'm sticking with the principle. And, uh, um, any uh, any stuff about Kane in the book? Um, Sort of the perceived rivalry that existed between you and Kane? I think I, think I just spoke on how, you know, the competition was, man, me, Kane, and uh, people like G-Rap, KRS-One. Got a lot of respect for them cats back then, you know, Let's say I used to try to put my weight on him. You know what I mean? Like, I had the street mentality, uh, you know, still with me. You know, I would see these brothers. I wouldn't disrespect them, but I just wouldn't, you know, show them no love. I wouldn't communicate with them. It was, it was a strategic thing, you know what I mean? But back then, you know, I stuck to my grounds. And, you know, when you're from the street, the street mentality is don't let nobody get close to you. You know what I mean? And I had that mentality since I was like eighth, ninth grade. Well, it's funny because I look back on it. And I'm like, oh man, but what would? Why would you feel threatened? You were rock him. I forget that at the time you were still a kid. Y'all were all really kids. Seventeen, eighteen. My, I think you know when I came out, I was I was just turned eight. Well, seventeen. Um, I was rocking for a while. Turned eighteen on the road. You know what I mean? Young, painful you know, out. Yeah. Well, first I was being rock him single. Right, the single. We rocked that. Then '87 um, dropped the album. But yeah, man, you know, I was, I was, you know, I would see certain MCs and, you know, give them a head and all and just look at them. And, um, 
you grow, you mature, you know what I mean? And, and them, them same brothers, man, I got like the utmost respect for them now, man. Cause brothers like that that, you know, made me get on my pen and, and stay, you know, stay rooted. Was that in your mind? Eric Sermon said in his mind when him and EPMD was coming out of Long Island that right. somehow when they was coming up, it had got spun that they was trying to get at you on a record. Well, uh, I want to know if that ever landed with you. Did you ever hear this story? Well, yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was little things said. You know, at first everybody was you know saying how you know he sound like me. So I guess they caught feelings first because Paris, Paris, sound, that is. Paris, sound Paris. like you a little bit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right. So I heard in one of their records, you know, people say this and that how we sound like the R and our music was whack. Oh so he, yeah, he caught, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so he caught feelings first because you know, again at this point, I'm I'm not gonna say I'm used to it, but at this point I expect. Certain people like to, you know, follow my style or whatever. I don't even want to say bite my style too <laughs> modest, man. But um, you know what I mean? I I, I was kind of used to it at that point, man. And um, you know, I ain't really say nothing. But after I started hearing little, you know, rhymes, and then the the dig 'em smack, smack me, I smack you back. I'm like, well, I said, stop bugging. The brother said, dig 'em. I never dug 'em. He couldn't follow the leader long enough, so I, I drug 'em. And the danger zone, he should arrange his own. Face it, face it, it's basic. Erase it, change your tone. But um, yeah, man, you every now and then somebody throw something at you, you throw a little something back. You know what I mean? But yeah, I thought, I thought, um, uh, I thought we was gonna have a little problem. But uh, everything was alright. Who'd you end up? Who are you closest with now? Is there anyone in the rap game that you're you're really close with on a personal level? Um, I'm I'm still stuck in my ways, but I don't I don't put the fence up. No more, you know what I mean? Like I, I speak to Nas, we we um, see each other from time to time. We chat a little bit. Um, you know, I used to um, keep in touch with Styles. We did a tour together, but um, you know, like I said, man, it's just like you know, like before. They, I don't know if it was animosity, you know what I mean? But now it's just like you know, the utmost respect for my peers. You seem like you're in a very self-reflective place in your life. Yeah, like man, you're looking I'm, I'm, back at how you handled yes, things, the things you liked and yes, didn't sir. like. Yes, sir. I'm like, what up? Um, Are you mostly happy with with how things went? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I would have did it the same way because at the end of the day, you know, I, it it, it could have got me in a lot of trouble, man. But I think the way I was moving and the things I was doing kind of kept me away from a lot of the you know bullshit and a lot of the in the industry bullshit. You know what I mean? So I think I'll do it the same way. Um, when Beat selection and music creation and production. Yes, sir. Um, how involved were you in each selection of each beat and production that you rhymed on? That's a good question, man. Um, Eric B and Rakim catalog, I may have did 80% of the music myself. Sampling. Yeah. Or at least I want this sample yeah, and then well, uh, give it to somebody early, else to help yeah, you out. There. Early years, I ain't out of sample. I had a um, piece to my man Patrick Adams. He was the engineer and he was, he was a big producer, songwriter. But I would go to the studio with Pray Full of Records. Pat looped this beat. Pat looped the beat. Put this bass line on it. Put these horns on it. And, 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 and back then, I was grabbing samples from different records. But luckily, Pat knew how to tune the samples. So if I put a horn on it, he makes sure the horn is in key with the bass line. And a lot of early hip hop, a lot of people ain't know about that. Like when you hear a lot of it now, it's like, whoa, where, you know, where them horns at? Musically, it was all over the place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So luckily, you know, um, early I had Pat, I, you know, Patrick Adams on that first album. And he facilitated a lot of the uh, music the right way. Now, did the musicality come from your being around your aunt and understanding that yes. there was it was more than just the lyrics? I think so. I think so. Like, you know, even my moms and pops, like, moms and pops would play a lot of jazz in the crib. And I noticed, I noticed young that, you know, jazz didn't have to have no words on it to give you a feeling. So I always knew that, you know, music is supposed to feel. You know what I mean? So when I was picking records, when I would listen, I couldn't feel nothing, feel the flow, or, or you know, you you, you feel um, happiness when you hear a, a beat, sadness. You might feel energy. Music might be dark, whatever the case is. If I couldn't really feel nothing, I couldn't get nothing from it. But um, I used a lot of, and, and that was the thing. I always um, like writing the records that 
you know, attracted me to it right away. And sometimes it wasn't, you know, the, the popular choice that, you know, was, was uh, I guess, like the universal sound. I would, you know, pick abstract beats, but um, it brought that abstract rock him out. So, And that was the thing with Dre, too, knowing that, you know, I was used to picking beats that wasn't always, you know, universal. So, you know, just trying to, you know. Figure out how to be abstract and... And musical as well yeah. as inclusive of what Dre was trying. It's a lot. Right. It's Indeed, a lot to balance. So. Indeed. So. Right. How um, was oh, I was sorry, working on classic with Kanye West and oh, that, Harris. That, that that was dope, man. Yeah. Um, Kanye, man, like his energy. Like I, I I remember when they called me up to ask me to do the joint. So I was like, oh yeah, that's dope. That sounds dope. But then when you get on the phone with Kanye. It's like when you get off the phone, you're ready to do a joint. His, yeah, his energy height, is height. bananas, man. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You, you just feel good about music, you know what I mean? You know, you know having a conversation with him. Yo, Rod, you know, I want to such and such. And, yo, he even sent a track to the crib because the, um, the original um, track, they changed it. The original track was, was a sample, but it was slowed down, and it was real slow. So when I first heard it, I was like, you know, this is it. And I guess he was, you know, felt like, yeah, this is it. You know, if you rhyme like this, and he sent me like a 16 bar ad lib track of him rhyming, like, yo, Rob, we gonna do it. Like, this this is how we do it. He was like, and that, just like that on the track. that, just like, yo, Rob, this, this shit is gonna be dope. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, his, his energy, man, like, you know, like that for me, you know, like if I can work with a Kanye, you know, on an album type thing, you know, where he did most of the album or just a few joints. Like, you know, his his energy kinda, you know, takes yours and, you know, takes it over the top. Did um so uh you're picking beats, you're looping beats, um, you're putting all this production together, right? And kind of figuring it out. Yeah. Um did w- was it ever like uh was it ever hard to find your voice? Like, did you ever struggle yeah. finding, like, I need, this is what's going on out there, this is what's going on over here. I need to make sure I, this is my zone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, that, that, that was a constant fight with me. Um, trying to, you know, pick my lane, stay in it, but then explain it because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the norm. So just trying to, um, you know, push my style, trying to, um, you know, take it to the next level. But while everybody else was always doing something different, e- even like in the lu- lucrative sense of it, you know what I mean? Um, you could make a, a radio-friendly record and blow, you know what I mean? And, you know, I would I would think about it, you know what I mean? Every, you know, you're in the studio and, you know, you say to yourself, all I need is one of those beats and one of these you know, topics, and you know what I mean? But, you know, I think letting letting the process for me be organic is what, like, kept me, kept me focused, making sure, like, you know, when I pick my beats, it was the same process. If I didn't feel nothing, I wouldn't, you know. So, you know, it, if it was, if somebody did bring me a, a commercial beat or, or pop beat, it probably wouldn't have registered with me, right. you know what I mean? So being true to my process kind of kept me um, grounded as far as what I, you know, was supposed to do. And then when, once I got a little um, confidence, man, it was like, I'm supposed to be rhyming off of this. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be Did doing. y'all, you know, because Kane had Raw, which, what's the BPMs on Raw? A l- high, like 106. Fucking change, yeah. Yeah. Sweat the Technique. Is up there too. Yep. Yeah. Um, I got the juice. Yeah. Super fast. Super 116, fast. 116. Did y'all have? Was there a thing as an MC at that time that you had to be able to rock at higher than ninety, higher Whoa. than 87, 90? You know what I mean? Because that doesn't happen these days, right, where somebody right. goes and rhymes slow. at that tempo. Now right. what they do is it's they half time. They half time right, the beat. Right. Yeah. But y'all was in the pocket up. With the beat, was that a thing? Yes, sir. You know what it was, E, bro. At that time, some of the dances people was doing was high energy. Yeah, I mean, so we was able to make the, the running fast man all world that. is bone. Yeah. We was we was able to make the you know tracks to facilitate that because you know what I mean it, it was there. But um, right nowadays, it's slowed down a lot. You know what I mean, and, and it's more on the, like the 
the 90s, the 80s, you know what I mean? But um, also, like, as an MC, to rhyme on a faster beat, it, 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 it'll change your style up a little bit. Like, for me, instance, for, for instance, I would take a slow beat and put a thousand words in one bar. Mm. But with a fast track, you can't do that. So you got to change your style to fit the, you know, the faster track. So, you know, it, it used to, you know, challenge us and, and, and you know, we, we, we love just, you know, kicking that fast. But style. think about how different the style is of, of how Kane rocks on Set It Off and how you rap on Know The Ledge. Mm. Know The Ledge is really slow lyrically when you think about it. Sip the juice. I got enough to go around. You're you're right. you're you're still finding a different pocket right. in right. that up tempo. Right. Right. Kane right. was I get raw, but it was everything was exactly. super. Exactly. It was exactly. so it's interesting yeah. the different ways you could play. Right. But I still but measure an elite good. MC on their ability to get on an up tempo record and keep yes, the pace. Yes, sir. Right, because that's that's hard. It's hard to it sound like trash doing that. It is. No, no. And you know, I did, I I, I love doing it. It was um, I I did a song um titled Kick Along. I think that was like a buck 20 and I did it just for that fact the song was doom, 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 doom. I says um see if you can see if you can um I can't even remember the rhymes but it it, it was so fast that it, it just like I wanted to try it you know what I mean and um because Black Thought does that now right mm, Black Thought's yeah, one of yeah. those MCs that'll flex at a high BPM Lotus Bone. That's, with, that's, with I complete give... thoughts Eloquent vocabulary, right? Mm -hmm. And that's an elite MC thing to be able well, that to do. Was, that's that was that's one of my dudes. That uh, was Hov's whole start, Black too. Door. Don't forget, yeah, him, Jay, and, him and him and, him and um, Jazz. That's right. Jay and Jazz were going yeah. in yeah. tempo wise, like until Sophie Jay. and and, and yeah. all that. Yeah, they it was, took they them was, time before Buster gets there. Buster will go. Yeah, Buster. Yo, when I first heard that that uh, Buster verse. Soon as he went off, I was like, "That's the verse of the year, right?" Chris there. Brown, the Chris Brown record. Yeah. Soon, the first time I heard that, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's the verse of the year, right there. You know what I mean? Big up the bus, man. You know what I mean? Do you um? Did you had you seen the movie Juice when you wrote yeah, Know the they, Ledge? They actually let me um go see it before I wrote it. Like they called me up and um said they wanted me to do a song and um did I want to come see the movie? So I was like, yeah. Went down a little spot, checked it out. And after I watched the movie, they was like, yo, we want you to do the title song for the movie. So I was like, all right, all right. now we saying something, because I just seen it, and I got this whole idea of what I just seen in my head. So I went to the crib. Um, maybe a week before that, I went um, shopping. I used to do my little record shopping, and I would play my joints, listen to them, and then I'd take the good ones and put them at the front of the stack. So I get back to the crib, so I know I got that stack waiting. I pull the record out. First record. I just start looking around the room like, this shit is too easy, man. Took the record off, <laughs> looped the beat up. I had I had the SB12 in the crib, and you only get like, you know, 16, 12 seconds. Yeah, you know what I mean? 16 whatever. seconds, 12 seconds, you can manipulate it. Pete Rock taught me how to manipulate it, sample fast, and then slow it down. What up, Pete? I ain't forget, kid. So I throw the joint on, loop it up right quick. So I just got the drums and the bass line. So I'm sitting in there, and I wrote, uh, I think, two verses to it. Went to the studio the next day, laid the beat down, and finished the verses, went and played the drums on it and everything. You played, oh, you the, played drums the drums? Yeah, word up. Because I ain't had the right sample for that. You know what I mean? That th th so got on the drum set and, and, and finished it up. So it, it, was, a, it was a joint. Um, that I love doing. And, is it um, in the conversation for your best record? I mean, it's it's, I mean, it's up there. Yeah, and and you know, it's one of my one of my favorite joints too. You did know? you like what Ghostface did with it a few years ago? Oh, no doubt. I love Ghost, man. I love Ghost. Ghost is Ghost is, you know, like I'm 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 mad laid back. Ghost is totally the opposite of that. You know what I mean? I, I love his energy on the mic, and you know what I mean like we need that in New York. Yeah. Oh man, uh, that but that yeah, that record. I was just thinking about that song recently. It's interesting. You have four verses on it too. Yeah, yeah. Like that's stop. not common. You could stop. Yeah. <laughs> stop. Ah, like, let me stop, more. man. Word up. He's but, uh, like, it's too easy. I yeah, mean, word up. And the video you know is so I mean? hot. The way it cut with the movie, like it really. It's done. Now yeah, you you met Pac and y'all. You had a relationship with Pac and um, all that back we, then. We um we met briefly. Um, uh, the, the first time I met Pac, 
uh, it's like 19, might, might have been 89 or early 90s, man. We was in Miami. We was pulling into the venue, and this brother backstage holding this big poster up. Pulled over style. It was a poster of me. Um, he drew it. It was a poster of me laying on a slab of concrete, but under the concrete was all these MCs. And it was Digital Underground before they came out. They standing backstage. We like, yo, one, one. So we like, yeah, y'all made this for you. And, um, so it's Shock G and Shock G, G Money drew D, it, yeah. Broke up. So he's like, yo, I made this for you. Just wanted to give it to you. So, you know, I, I, I got the joint and um, took everybody in. Got them passes, took them backstage, meet everybody. And, you know, that was my way of giving back, you know what I mean? And then years later, Digital Underground came out. But um, they wasn't, you know, they wasn't uh, right, you famous know, then. Right? So I just, you know, showed them love, thanked them for the, um, for the picture. But years later... No, the, 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 the picture's still in my studio now. What? So I and, wait, you, and you think, and you think uh, Shock G actually drew this he picture? Did. He drew it. Shock G is an artist. Yeah. Now, by the way, I'd it's, like to take it's, it's it's crazy. Crazy. It's crazy. God, yeah, yeah and, and, and it, he, you know the way he did it, it it's crazy too. So you like know, he's I said, a jazz keyboardist too. Yeah, well, I want to like, take this uh, moment. Now I didn't know that. He's a he yeah, play he play everything. like wow. He, yeah. Wow. Well, we're mentioning Digital Underground and Shock G because I know this will get to them because Rakim's talking about them. I really desperately want Shock G to come up here for an interview. I, right. I've never interviewed Shock G. I haven't yeah, seen an interview yeah, with him in yeah. dumb long. So someone's going to pass that up. Yo, 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 Shock, come on down, Shock man. They yeah, trying to get at you, man. Music. Pete Rose trying to holler, man. Hey, bro, man. <laughs> the music, styles is down here. Listen, man. The musically, Shock G was just, he was awesome. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Like, yeah, no, thinking about his play, music. Play. And also, I don't know if you know that this. Jazz, that jazz takes you to another level, man. Some people yeah. believe. That him and Humpty Hump were the same person. <laughs> yo, stop. yo, I used to wonder, man. I used to, <laughs> uh, yo, I used to wonder. They look, yeah, yeah, man. Cool, yo, cool man, people, man. His name is Rakim, if you don't know. Uh, and if you haven't gone back to enjoy the great music he gave us in the late 80s and 90s, then you slipping and you're not doing your homework. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm going to get this book, Sweat the Technique. Did you yes. did you read it, too? Did you do a... Um, yeah, did an audio book. Audio oh, yeah. Psh, what? <laughs> yes, sir. Yo, yes, sir. Had to do it, audio, bro. Had to do it. <laughs> I need that. I need that. I had to that. do it, man. That's amazing. Yo, somebody gonna cut that up and put it to a beat. You know yeah. that? That's gonna be a hey, yo, new album that hey, comes yo, out bootleg. Hey, yo, I hope so, man. Keep 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 me rocking. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you, yeah, y'all. Give it up for Thank y'all, man. Thank y'all very much. <laughs>